Hey to everyone, it's Rob Ryder on uh, Thursday, July 18th, 2013. This is kind of interesting. Um, Roe was going through all of the different kinds of forms that were available through the county and found one for tax objection. And so, you know, one of the, one of the things that she likes to do is go get the forms, see what they say, try to build a picture of what's going on. And so she went down to get this form and uh, it says, uh, where does it say it down here? But basically this is going to be a tax objection form and uh, the complaint itself names the county collector as the defendant. And the county collector's in italicized. Not really sure what that means. But it said uh, you go down to the Kane County Circuit Clerk's Office Intake Division 540 South Randall Road, South St. Charles, or the Kane County Courthouse Room 160, yada yada yada, um, to get the form. That's where the form is available from. The new case information sheet. And so, see, see here it says Kane County Courthouse Room 160, 100 South 3rd Street. Pay attention to that. Because now we go down to the tax objection complaint. That's where it gets good. Two page form which is available through the Kane County Circuit Clerk's Office Intake Division. 540 Randall Road, same as above. Or, like it says here, or Kane County Courthouse, Room 160. Well, here it says, or Kane County Courthouse, or Kane County Courthouse, Room 160. 301 South 3rd Street. This one says 301 South 3rd Street. This one up here said 100 South 3rd Street. Kane County Courthouse. Kane County Courthouse. There's a Kane County Courthouse in two different places. There's one at 100 South 3rd Street. And then this says there's one at 301 South or 301 South 3rd Street. Well, Roe knows about the one at 100 South 3rd Street. She's been there many, many times. But guess what is at 301 South 3rd Street? Guess. Did you guess it would be the Geneva Lutheran Church? 301 South 3rd Street, Geneva, Illinois. There's a courthouse in here. here. Room 160 in this church is a courthouse. Now, because it has to do with tax and tax is revenue, it's where the court of the exchequer is. Exchequer is over the king's revenue. This is where the English common law court of exchequer is. It's in this Methodist or this Lutheran church. And wherever the exchequer is, is supposed to be where the king's bench is because they both follow the king. The two courts that never move in English common law is the court of chancery and the court of common pleas. They are, have been for a thousand years maybe, at Westminster Abbey. Well, Westminster Abbey is the Church of England, and here in America the Church of England is the Episcopal Church. So again, it's our belief, getting stronger every day, that the uh, Episcopal Church at the diocese is... Uh, where the Court of Chancery and the Court of Common Pleas are in English common law. And here in this Lutheran Church, 301 South 3rd Street, 301 South 3rd Street, Room 160, it's a church. So Roe had stopped by and it, it kind of looks like this picture. There was nobody there. None of the doors were open. Walked all around. Big church, you know, good sized church, but there was nobody there. Now, this is in the downtown historical area of Geneva, and Geneva is supposed to be the county seat, the seat of justice of Kane County. And here is a church called Geneva. Most churches to my recollection, have a saint's name or something as a name, but this one's called Geneva. Very interesting. It could be a clue, right? You're looking for a church that has the name of the 
what should be the county seat on it and you just found the cord we'll find out but it is what it is man look at that they're saying to take your um, this two-page form which is available to you through the Kane County Circuit Court okay so you could go to either of these places or the Kane County Courthouse room 160 301 South 3rd Street Geneva you could go to the church and get a form because in that church is a court and it's the common law courts of England this, these courts are where the, our, our cases start the ones that we don't get any notification of and the reason we don't get notified is they don't have us in their system as being here and I think if you do the communicate in good standing with the Episcopal Church that gets you into the court of chancery where all the records are and it's the office the recorder whatever the record says it says you will have appeared to the civil magistrate to the civil government or worst case it would be in this um, Lutheran Church in room 160 take it to them take them your baptismal certificate say in case you didn't know for the record I'm a baptized Christian now I talked to Jeff out in Washington today and he's already talked to a rector of an Episcopal Church who has told him yeah if you if you send us or come down with your baptismal certificate in a self-addressed envelope saying that you want it to be duly recorded in their books they will do it and they will mail you back a certificate saying that it has been done and talking a little bit what you know what needs to, we need to know next then is well okay if they send me a certificate do I need to give it to anybody else for the civil authority to recognize me as a Christian and quit allowing these false accusers in a court run under the Talmud to take my property and that's part of what we're trying to get done so this is huge man uh, those who don't think that the church and the state are tied together <laughs> the Kane County courthouse room 160 301 South 3rd Street is in a Lutheran church so um, so what else is going on oh rich up in Alpena he went and sat in a he, he went and sat through a, uh, a sermon at a, an Episcopal Church on Sunday now rich and Tom had talked to the rector there before and um, respectfully but you know look, really looking to get the answer today and there's nothing wrong with that right what, what I think we've all learned from this we're gonna back off a little bit and go real slow because these are our friends they just don't understand either right they hold the office of ministry and there's nobody holding the office of magistracy we're supposed to be doing that slow, so steady and slow we go so rich went to church and after church um, they had a get together in the building next door and uh, cookies and donuts type thing and he went over and an older gentleman came up and struck up a conversation with him and they were talking this guy was talking about his personal journey to find the truth and so forth and so on and you know I don't know where all the conversation went to but what I do know is the guy gave Rich a business card when he was done and he's the dean of the local college up in Alpena and he said you know you should come out over someday and come take a look and I'll, I'll give you a tour and you know talk and, and and by the way we have all these really good seminars that are really next to nothing for the information you're getting that you will get out of it they, they're, they're very inexpensive to come to you ought to come sometime now these things he's talking about right could be the things you need to know to exist in the, the common law system it, it could be the uh, ends of courts who knows you know but you know he didn't have to say any of these things yet he did so um, a couple of things I've tried that I'll, I'll just put on this video because I like to make it public record 
a few ideas um, on contacting these uh, the church. Um, oh, one more thing before we go there. I was just talking to Bob in Massachusetts, and he's been trying to get a hold of a deacon. And the guy's asking, well, you know, can you give me an idea of what it is you want for him so I know what deacon to give to you? And, um, he said, well, and he was explaining, well, listen, I'm being persecuted by a false accuser. And the guy says, well, you need to go and talk to the rector about that. Now, the rector is the priest at the local church. And as a priest of a local church who does marriages, he must be a justice of the peace. And he's in the, the it's the correct church to have the court of chancery in, which is where we're trying to get our complaint, petition, plea of the crown, whatever it is, we're trying to get into the court of chancery. Because that's where you get the original writ under the great seal from the court of chancery to get something like a um, show cause why the person you're complaining about shouldn't be held in contempt of court for um, simulating a legal process. I did a video on this, you know, a month ago. And what it says in there is when they do these things with the errors and omissions and the paperwork and whatever it is, not having a complaint, whatever it is, it's considered indirect contempt. And why is it indirect? Because it's not done in the presence of the court. Yet, I'm standing in a frickin' courtroom. You understand, right? They're saying it's not being done in the presence of the court. That where you're standing is not where the court is. As it turns out, it's in a. It appears it's going to be in this uh, this Lutheran church because again, tax is revenue. Revenue is exchequer. Exchequer follows the king, and so does the king's bench. But where do you put your complaint in to start a case? You start with the court of chancery to get the original writ under the great seal. And in that same building, it's supposed to be the court of common pleas. It may not need to go to the king's bench. It may all be handled right through the Episcopal Church. But the revenue of the king is being handled in the exchequer, which is what taxes rent. Rent is what goes to the king. Enough on that. All right, so I sent this to, uh, well, I'll just read it. The Venn, the Archdeacon of the Episcopal Diocese of Western Michigan. I found that online. They said that's the correct way to write a letter to an Archdeacon of an Episcopal Diocese. Mary Lou Schalberbeck, Sister, I come to you today in need of someone holding the office of deacon tasked by the early church fathers with collecting the acts of the martyrs. By definition, an act of the martyrs is the testimony of a Christian or records of a court cases in which Christians were persecuted by false accusers. A deacon is the notary for the one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. What happened in the past is the past, yet I have a current and ongoing situation that needs to be addressed by the church that is that the civil authority of the state is unaware that I am a Christian. As an adopted son of God, I am a prince of the church, commissioned with an office in the lay apostate of the church, entitled by God to all rights, title, and interest, and instruments of that office. I am the civil authority of the church, tasked with ensuring the temporal order of things are conducted in a Christian manner. I am to speak in the name of the ward the Lord wielding the civil sword against the powers of darkness and evil. I have much to say. However, those that need to know that I declare my acceptance of this office are unaware of my honest intent to fulfill the mission given to me by the Holy Spirit. I wish for you to take my testimony of acceptance of my rightful office within the church. And anybody else in the church that happens to watch this, I accept the office. You can't keep me out. Because from Lumen Gentium, chapter 4, laity, and this Lumen Gentium is the Catholic Constitution. Not the Roman Catholic Constitution, the Constitution of the Catholic Government, which is the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church headquartered in Vatican City, which is where the Secretariat is. This is the Constitution of the Government of the Church. 
and we've already been told there are two jurisdictions the state and the church separate jurisdictions from each other that's why a bishop and a priest can't be tried in the same courts you are they're in a different jurisdiction they're in the church jurisdiction we should be able to be in the church jurisdiction if we're baptized Christians it is a government I have citizenship there they've already said it what I don't have are, is the damn identification to show I'm from the Holy See and not the state of Michigan I may be in the world but I'm not of the world and that's what the laity is supposed to be we're supposed to be in the world wielding the civil sword of uh, of uh, the judicial authority to make sure that the temporal world complies with God's law if not they'll act like they do right now because they're stiff necked SOBs what's the saying here for their pastors to know how much the lady contributed to the welfare of the entire church they also know that they are not ordained by Christ to take upon the cells alone the entire salvific mission of the church toward the world that's the pastors they're not supposed to do it all the term laity is here understood to mean all the faithful except those in holy orders and those in the state of religious life especially approved by the church these faithful are bapt by baptism made one body with Christ and constituted among the people of God they are in their own way made shares in the priestly prophetic and kingly functions of Christ we hold the office of Christ they may not like to hear that let's call ourselves a lay apostolate that's the office that it says further on that we were given but the lady by their very vocation seek the kingdom of God by engaging in the temporal affairs and by ordering them according to the plan of God we, all we need to have is our church ID we can go speak in the name of the Lord and be protected therefore since they are tightly bound up in all types of temporal affairs it is their special task to order and throw light upon these affairs in such a way that they may come into being and then continually increase according to Christ and the praise of the Creator and the Redeemer we got all these smart motherfuckers out here we know all this shits wrong right we're just taking it to the wrong people to tell we gotta take it to the church <clears throat> we're going to the wrong jurisdiction to solve the problem you're walking in the court of the Jew you're not gonna win it ain't gonna happen stop 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 and think about it if their procedures has all these holes in it errors and omissions there's no sworn complaint um, dates are missing seals are missing signatures are missing whatever it is and you put in a sworn complaint about that complaint and they tell you that you're not following the procedure then obviously what's written in the book is not the procedure because you're pointing out that the plaintiff didn't follow what's in the book and they're telling you you're not following the procedure it's because it has nothing to do with what's in the damn book the only book that matters to them is the Talmud it's where they get their law from the lay apostolate however in participation with the salvi salvific mission of the church itself through their baptism and confirmation are commissioned to the apostolate by the Lord himself you cannot keep me out I have an office in the church I claim the office what I don't have are the instruments of the office it's because I was given two citizenships at birth Bishop told us this you were given two citizenships at birth he goes on to say you can't serve two masters what do you think he's telling you you got to reject the state citizenship and claim the church citizenship and then you'll get a corporate soul from the church that's in a different jurisdiction you won't be a mister I don't know what to say but it won't be mister it, your corporate soul will be different in the corpus the corporate soul will be the transfer of your all capital letter name estate into the corporate soul and you will have both legal and equitable title and it will be administered by the church they get their 10 percent whatever it is and then you're supposed to <coughs> go out and do good deeds with with your account now the later called in a special way to make the church present and operative in those places and circumstances where only through them can it be come the salt of the earth there ain't enough priest right we're, we are in the world we're the ones going through this if we want to solve it there is a way 
the laity. It can also be called in various ways to a more direct form of cooperation with the apostolate of the hierarchy. This was the way certain men and women assisted Paul the Apostle in the Gospel, laboring much in the Lord. Okay. Are he, is he talking about deacons there? Could be. Because you can be a permanent deacon in the church. <clears throat> but you don't have to be. Right? You can be a lay apostolate. I take that office. I'll just be a cardinal. I don't want to be in the holy orders. Because a cardinal doesn't need to be in the holy orders. Most of them are, but they can ask for a dispensation and are usually granted it. Further, they have the capacity to assume from the hierarchy certain ecclesiastic functions which are to be performed for a spiritual purpose to ensure God's laws are obeyed. How much more spiritual can that get? They conduct themselves as children of promise and thus strong in faith and in hope they make the most of the present with the patience to wait the glory that is to come. Let them not then hide this hope in the depths of their hearts, but even in the program of the secular life, let them express it by a continual conversion and by wrestling against the world rulers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness. We're destined to do it as a lay apostate, not apostate, excuse me, Lord, apostolate. An apostate is what they are that have taken you to court. They've all been baptized, but they don't believe it. They don't follow their baptism. That's an apostate. They have courts to handle that. Right? The one in Rome is called the uh, Congregation of the Doctrine of Faith and Morals, formerly known as the Holy Inquisition. But the Lord wishes to spread his kingdom also by means of the laity, namely the kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. <coughs> and this kingdom, creation itself, will be delivered from the slavery, slavery to corruption into f the freedom of glory of the sons of God. When we become the civil authority of the church. May the goods of this world be more equitably distributed among all men, and may they in their own way be conductive in the universal progress in human and Christian freedom. Moreover, let the lady also in their combined efforts of remedy and customs, remedy the customs and conditions of the world. How many people have been told it's just the way we do it? That's a custom. We have to remedy that. And how do we do it? We say, well, boy, what authority do you make that claim? Because I don't think you've got a proper oath of office. Right? I need a, ju a judicial determination on your decision. So, you know, here's the thing. They tell you that. You take your complaint to the church. Say, this is what I was told by this officer at this office. I believe I I'd like to have a <clears throat> writ of core warrant issued against the office to find out by what authority they're keeping me from doing this. By what authority do they bring this charge? By what authority will they not give me my birth records? Whatever it is. Moreover, let the lady also in their combined efforts remedy the customs and conditions of the world if they are an inducement to sin so that they all may be conformed to the norms of justice and may favor the practice of virtue rather than hinder it. It ain't going to happen unless we do it. We hold the office of magistracy, the holy orders, the people in the church hold the office of ministry, and their their office doesn't allow them to do what we can do. But that ominous doctrine which attempts to build a society with no regard whatever for religion, and which attacks and destroys religious liberty of its citizenship, is to be rejected. See, these are things that, the reason I did this is you would point these out to somebody like a deacon and say, look, this is what the Constitution says, right? Either we're going to follow this or somebody's committing treason. I want to appeal to the Pope, because every Christian has appealed to the Pope. And there's an ominous doctrine which attempts to build a society with no regard whatever for religion. We're in it right now. We, we are supposed to, it is rightly to be rejected. I reject that citizenship. 
However, let the chef, and this is the, this is big too. And this is in section 37 of uh, is this Lumen Gentia? Yeah, Lumen Gentia. And it says at the bottom of this at the bottom of section 37. However, let the shepherds respectfully acknowledge that just freedom which belongs to everyone in this earthly city. They have to tell you that there is just freedom for you in the earthly city, and now I want to know how to get it. The earthly city they're talking about is Vatican City. It's the capital of the Catholic um, government. Just like Washington, D.C. is the capital of the United States government. It's the capital. But the um, government is the with the Catholic Constitution is the Holy See. It's their constitution for all Christians of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. And I believe you only need to agree with the very first four ecumenical councils to fit that definition. Each individual layman must stand before the Lord, the world as a witness to the resurrection and life of the Lord Jesus and a symbol of the living God. I go on and on. So anyways, that was all, you know, stuff out of a thing. But what this is, is a letter to this uh, archdeacon. I could go on and on, but believe these excerpts from the dogmatic constitution of the Catholic Church should suffice as evidence. For instance, on 37, however, let the shepherds respectfully acknowledge that the freedom which belongs to everyone in this earthly city. This commands the bishops to acknowledge our just freedom found in the earthly city of God, Vatican City. Jerusalem had become the harlot, the Babylon, the enemy of God, and was destroyed as prophesied by Christ himself as well as Apostle John in the book of Revelations. book of Revelations, the Apostle John is talking about the destruction of the Jewish temple in 70 AD because he was in Patmos under Nero, and Nero was the emperor from 58 AD to 68, 68 AD. And Nero Caesarea, or whatever the correct word is, from the Greek, put into the um, Hebrew, and the number taken equals 666. And in the very early Latin Bibles, the numbers taken from Latin put into the Hebrew, the number is 616, and 616 is the number of the beast in the Latin Bible, early version. It's already happened, man. We're in the end times now. All that shit's long. That's 2,000 years ago. The new Jerusalem here on earth is a city on the hill, Rome, the city of God. It's the new city of God. It's new Jerusalem. It is. This new city of God has its own government, the Holy See, and the Secretary of the State of the Christian Nation is in Vatican City. I wish to receive my Christian Nation identification for my protection while I do God's will here in the world. The Pope, as the elected president of the Christian Nation, has jurisdiction over all baptized people, be they Christian in belief or apostates. I should have said Christians in faith or apostates. And these apostates are daily by use of a simulated legal process and false witness persecuting our brothers and sisters in private ecclesiastic courts and I wish to appeal this to the Pope. <laughs> I don't want to go to the court of the false accuser anymore. Finally over the last few weeks it has been revealed to us that the church and state are two separate jurisdictions and that we are given dual citizenship and that we cannot serve two masters. <clears throat> came from a bishop. For the record, I renounce my state citizenship, pronounce my desire to claim my God-given domicile in the kingdom of heaven via the government of the Holy See. I come to the Episcopal Church in this matter, matter as the Bishop of Rome has no jurisdiction with the realms of England. The Church of England slash Episcopal Church in the role of the Court of Chancery are the civil authority of the state and separation between those of Protestant belief, law of the land, and those of Christian faith, not under law, but under grace, you seem to be the guards of the gates of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. I believe I need to register my baptismal record with the Episcopal Church to be seen as a community of good standing 
a member of the body of Christ, a Christian man here to serve the Lord as a prince of the church, to see that justice is found at every man's front door. I am of the office of magistracy. Any procedure that needs to be completed should now be made known to me. Unless someone swears a complaint why I am to be denied my office within the church, it would be treason against the Constitution of the Catholic Church to deny my claim. That's what all that was for. That's why I pointed it out. I'm going to call it treason. This is my third attempt to get an answer to questions from your diocese, the first two being met with silence, complete silence. What will you do, sister? All right. So I had sent that a couple days ago, and I haven't heard from her. I'm kind of disappointed. But we will move on. So I, I had finally got my baptismal certificate. And uh, because there's only a small Episcopal church in our town, and a lot of these churches seem to be locked, you know, you would think churches would be unlocked, but hey, they're locked. Um, I decided to, uh, you know, have a, a couple of letters, have an exp explanation letter. And, and what I wanted to take to them and put it into uh, an envelope because I wasn't coming back with it and I'm leaving it at the church and I did and I had to leave it at the front door a little bit under the welcome mat came back and emailed the secretary and yeah, that's what this is all about but this was the letter in there in case they hadn't been there and, and the reason I read these to you is you know to give you an idea what, where the thought process comes from and if you want to use them yourself or change them and use them to, to try to make your first contact, whatever, by all means. Uh, hello and blessed day to you. I am Robert Allen Rutluski, son of God. Here is one of his people searching for that which is true. I come in peace to share the good news. The Holy Spirit is calling his harvesters to the field, of which I am what but one of untold many. Some are called to harvest the grain, others to burn the weeds. I am of the latter. The two divinely appointed offices of magistracy and ministry are called to evangelize the Christian nation and conform the temporal order of the world to compliance with God's law. Honor the Father, heart, mind, and soul, and treat your brother like you treat yourself. This is what brings me to you today. My calling, as has been, my calling has been to study the law, not as an attorney, but as a mechanic looking to fix a broken system. I've invested the last three years of my life in this pursuit. All day, every day, it's what I do. That and pray a lot. My prayers for wisdom, guidance, knowledge, and God in His great mercy have answered this sinner in oh so many ways. He continually gives me strings from the Gordian Nauta confusion to pull on in my attempts to learn what is true. God is, so, it, God is good, so very good, and continually gives this sinner a witness in many forms to drive him on. My favorite, if one could be better than another, is that with a little faith and good intention, a man can speak to a cloud and command it to go away. Yes, you can. Nice blue sky day, <clears throat> puffy little white clouds, asking God to speak for you, stare at the cloud and speak, go away, go away, and go away, and it does. It may take a minute, but after all, it's a test of faith, and it'll give you goosebumps. First time you do it, you can go out on a nice day, nice blue sky day, just when I like to do it, look at a cloud, get your head right, say a little prayer, say, God, give me a little witness, give me a little witness, and tell that cloud to go away, and don't stare at it until it does, stare at it, tell it, go away, go away, go away, go away, go away, go away, in a minute it's gone, a minute and a half maybe, sometimes when they go away, it looks like it's a leaf pattern that's left, it's really cool, try it someday. Back to the law. The one holy Catholic and apostolic church is a sovereign nation, the nation of Christians. This nation has its own government known as the Holy See, with the Vatican City being the seat of government. The Pope is elected as president of this nation, and its citizens are those baptized with water in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. We all have dual citizenship, one from the church and the other from the state. One is ruled by grace, the other by the law of the land. The law of the land is the law of the Jew, and the law of the Jew is found in the Talmud. We cannot serve two masters and are called to make a choice. Live under the law or live under grace. I choose grace. All Christians are commissioned into the office of lay apostolate. 
by confirmation, anointed with oil, and receiving the laying of hands by a bishop. While God has commissioned this office to us, we have to make public proclamation of faith and accept the office. By doing so, having accepted the office, we are entitled by God to the instruments of the office, the citizenship within the church. Our citizenship papers should show that we are from the Holy See, not the state of Michigan. This is what is missing, the instruments of citizenship as members of the body of Christ. We are to renounce our state citizenship under the law of the land and accept and cherish our citizenship in the church under grace. The Church of England, in its many forms, is the pivot point between the two societies. There is no separation of church and state within the realms of England. The Church of England controls the Court of Chancery, one of the four superior courts of the realm. The Court of Chancery is the one court of justice in the state and ensures the, keys, the king's peace is kept. Well, now we found out the Court of Exchequer is in the uh, Lutheran Church. And that should be where the king's bench is. I believe the bishops of the Episcopal Church hold the great seal of the realm, and that to defy the court of chancery shall rain the thunderous wrath of the Vatican upon you. I love that line. By complying with Canon 1 of the Canon's Episcopal Diocese of Western Michigan, specifically being seen as a communicant in good standing, that the world will have public notice that I am a Christian, not a Jew or Gentile. If you're a Christian, you're not a Gentile. To a Jew, you're still a Gentile, but a Gentile is a pagan, period. It's where gentleman comes from. I am not running from the civil authority of the state. I am running towards it. The civil authority of the state, the Queen of England, will then protect me from those who have Judeo-Christian beliefs, apostates. These apostates, by use of simulated legal process and usurpation of state office, have turned the garden of the garden into a prison planet, and this must end. To do this, these apostates must be brought before the courts of the church and given an opportunity to see the light. This is a matter of faith and sin within the jurisdiction of the congregation of the doctrine of faith and morals, a.k.a. Holy Inquisition. There is no state government. The offices have been vacated as the usurpers have not sworn to subscribe the oath mandated in the Michigan or state of Michigan Constitution. They have not accepted the state office. You can see I ran this, typed this way too fast. I am eager to explain this in detail and provide evidence, as I am trying to resolve a controversy not cause one. And for me to move forward, I need the input of the church. I need the instruments of my office. I need to be seen as a communicant standing, your brother in Christ. And because I could, I went ahead and did a declaration of acceptance of office in the one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I, Robert Allen Wierluski, Son of God, accept the office of lay apostolate, commissioned to me by the Lord himself, evidenced by the provided certificate of baptism and confirmation. I renounce my allegiance to any foreign prince and commit myself as a servant of the Lord, as a prince of the church, to wield the sword of civil authority, to conform the temporal order to his will. May peace reign in his kingdom. Uh, okay, so you get the idea, right? That uh, That's what's been happening. And the, the main reason for this, again, was to point this out, that here at 301 South 3rd Street is the Kane County Courthouse, and at that address is a Lutheran church, Geneva Lutheran Church. Go figure. We'll see where it leads. See you all.